Hello makers, I'm Baldi and today I'm going to show you how to make a digital fireplace. Let's get started. If you, like myself, grew up in a home with a real fireplace, then you certainly know how good it felt to watch the dancing flames on a cold winter day. This project can bring back that feeling. First, we are assembling the required electronics. Then, write the code and program the microcontroller. And finally, we are going to create a realistic looking fireplace made of wood. Worth mentioning that this fireplace only serves decorative purposes, it will not provide any heat. Let's get to it. We will need the following parts and tools. A roll of WS2812 addressable RGB LED strip. We are going to use around 2 meters of it. Microcontroller. I'm using the ESP8266 based VMOS D1 Mini for almost all of my projects because it's cheap, reliable has a built-in Wi-Fi, but basically any other Arduino compatible microcontroller can be used. We will need some flexible wires, a 10K potentiometer, one push button, one switch, a small plastic project box to house the electronics, and some other components like scotch tape, double-sided tape. You can also buy LED strip that already has a double-sided tape on its back and the standard tools like soldering iron, solder, wire cutter, screwdriver. First we need to see the required number of LEDs and stripes to cover the visible area. We don't want them to be too far or too close. When we know the proper dimensions, we cut it to pieces. We are going to use a zigzag configuration, so make sure that you solder the stripes together properly. I used pieces of silicone wire to connect the tracks together. First added some solder to the track. Then thin the wires and connected the pads together. Ground to ground, 5 volts to 5 volts and input pin to output pin. To develop the software, I just glued the stripes to the base I prepared earlier. This is not the final configuration. When I had my display ready, I grabbed the VMOS D1 MIDI and connected the configuration to its 5V ground and D4 pins. Ran some animations on it and it worked like a charm. Now we are ready to develop the fire simulation. For easier testing and development, I wrote the JavaScript code. It was easier to see the results in the browser, to fine-tune the code, and when I'm satisfied with it, I can just use it as a template to write the C code. Here you can see the fire simulation script in action. I always like to use headers to connect the microcontroller to the board, because this way I can take it out to reprogram or even use it in other projects if it's not needed anymore. 
potentiometer and a push button was added to the PCB so we can control the fire intensity and color. And with that, the electronics and the coding part was complete. Now it's time to make the fake fireplace. And for that, I will use some scrap QSB construction panel and some wooden lots. First, I measured and cut the front panel for the fireplace. To draw the curve at the top of the front panel, I used a piece of rope, a nail and a pencil. It's a good solution if you don't have a big calipers at hand. After that, I draw the outlines of the front panel. Then I placed the glass window on the center and outlined it as well. After preparing the material for the box, I used 90 degrees corner clamps to hold them together before securing them with screws. Before the final assembly, we need to do the paint job. I used some black antique spray paint on the outside to give it a metallic look and matte black paint on the rest of the surfaces. After the paint dried, I put it all together. Few screws with some piece of scrap wood will hold the glass in place. We need a hole in the top part to connect the LED strip to the electronics.
As a last step, I outlined the back panel, cut it and sprayed it with matte black paint. Now that we have everything ready, the fake fireplace and working electronics, it only needs to be put together. The LED strip needs to be secured to the back panel with double-sided tape. I figured if we put the top parts closer together, we will get a much more realistic flame shape. After leading out the wires through the hole, we can close the box. I drilled three holes on the project box, one for the potentiometer, one for the push button and one for the main switch. Then placed and secured the potentiometer, the main switch and glued the push button in place. Finally, after adding a USB cable to power the whole thing, we can close the housing as well. Here is how it works, powered by a USB power bank. I was curious, so I measured the power consumption. It consumes around 0.3 Ampere, which is very manageable. There you have it. This is how I created a realistic fireplace. If you have an old unused stove in your home and you want to make it fancy, just make the electronic parts and put it behind the glass. The fire effect looks much better behind a frosted glass. But if you don't have that at hand, you can just use regular glass and put some window frosting film on it. It's cheap and you can use it on both sides of the glass for maximum effect. That's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please like, share and subscribe. See you next time.